عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه من والاه وبعد Last time we finished with the statement of the Malaika saying سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم Then the following ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Adam قال يا آدم أنبئهم بأسمائهم After Allah presented whatever uh, things that he had Adam nominate he presented them احنا في سورة البقرة so we are resuming from ayah number 35 ayah 35 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَقُلْنَا يَا آدَمُ اسْكُنْ أَنْتَ وَزَوْجُكَ الْجَنَّةِ This is the first time that Allah addresses Adam and his wife. The first time Allah addresses Adam, it was Adam alone. قُلْنَا يَا آدَمُ أَنْبِئُهُمْ بِأَسْمَائِهِمْ Tell them the names of things that I have presented to you and I have taught you. Here he is directing Adam and his wife to do what? To dwell in paradise. The instruction here is going to Adam, to Adam and then to his wife. The language says this. وَقُلْنَا يَا آدَمُ اسْكُنْ So the command is given to Adam and Eve is added وَزَوْجُكَ اسْكُنْ أَنْتَ وَزَوْجُكَ So the dwelling of Adam in paradise here does not and should not change the fact that Adam was created to live on the earth. Because in the beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً That's where he comes from, that's where he belongs, that's where he will be buried, this is where he will be resurrected from. مِنْهَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ وَفِيهَا نُعِيدُكُمْ وَمِنْهَا نُخْرِجُكُمْ تَارَةً أُخْرَى It is from the earth that we have created you. It is to the earth that we return you back, and from it we will resurrect you one more time. So now, from the collection of the ayat talking about this issue, we understand something central. That the, the dwelling in paradise is meant for being temporary, based on the fact that this is what the text is telling us and also based on the fact that Allah knows what is happening and what was happening and what will happen. So we know from the rest of the story that Adam was sent down to earth, right? And we'll talk about that part when it comes to coming down to the earth. But here we talk about him entering into paradise because there is a kind of like folklore story made around this. And I call it folklore intentionally because it has nothing to do with reality. Oh, Adam got us out of paradise. Adam is the reason. Adam is this. Adam is that. As if Allah acted in anger against Adam when he told him, go down to the earth as if Allah reacted. But no, this is his plan all around, right? All along, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has this plan in place, okay? وَقُلْنَا يَا آدَمْ أُسْكُنْ أَنْتَ وَزَوْجُكَ الْجَنَّةِ And this also is a remark that is quite important, that رَفِيقَتُكَ فِي الدُّنْيَا 
أقرب ما تكون رفيقتك في الآخرة إلا إذا فرق بينكما الإيمان والكفر The wife or the spouse or the husband that you use for yourself is eventually going to be your companion in the hereafter depending where you go, you will go together and we can talk about the details for this but this is something that we need to pay attention to when we make choices okay أسكن أنت وزوجك الجنة دول you and your wife in paradise is an invitation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Adam and his wife Eve alayhi salam to dwell into paradise it doesn't say here for a period but it points to the fact that if you eat from that tree you will be among the wrongdoers فَتَكُونَ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ so that sounds like a contract even though it is not spelled all of it all at once with clear mention this is a contract between me and you you will dwell there with the condition that you listen to my condition my condition is that you do not get near that tree and we'll talk about why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not tell them وَلَا تَأْكُلَا مِنْ هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةِ Why does he say وَلَا تَقْرَبَا Because the physiology of prohibition has a meaning. When Allah prohibits wine, He says اجتنبوا, avoid it. When He prohibits adultery, zina, He says وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا Do not get near. Something amazing. When he prohibits gambling, he says also فَاجْتَنِبُوا Gambling and, uh, and wine are prohibited together. إِنَّمَا الْخَمْرُ وَالْمَيْسِرُ وَالْأَنْصَابُ وَالْأَزْلَامُ وَرِجْزُ مِنْ عَمَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ فَاجْتَنِبُوا Avoid it. So what's the difference between avoid it? and between don't get near and between do not do it like killing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited murder right killing is different from murder I, I want to get linguistic a little bit killing in English means legitimate and illegitimate but murder is always illegitimate always unlawful so what Allah prohibits was murder which means killing without due right or due process okay so this is the difference between killing we kill animals to eat right we don't murder it's not a crime so when we use the English language we need to know the difference okay uh, وقلنا يا ادم وكل اسكن اسكن انت وزوجك الجنه so we, de we decided that there is a contract but it's not spelled with all of its conditions but some of the conditions are here you live wherever you want you will find what you like wherever you want right and do not get near we are at this juncture now trying to explain why not get near that tree? When Allah prohibits something by making us avoid it or stay away from it from the beginning, there's a difference. When Allah says avoid it, you can get near, but you have to avoid it if you get near. But do not get near stops you at a distance. This is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying وَلَا تَقْرَبَا لَا تَقْرَبُوا الزِّنَا Don't get near. Okay? Why? Because zina cannot happen without lusting. Lust means desire to have something that is not yours. Okay? It, you are... 
ولا تقربوا مال اليتيم نفس الشيء do not get near so any time Allah says ولا تقربوا or ولا تقربا in this ayah it means that it is too powerful an attraction that if you get near you will violate so you look what is common between do not get near and avoid you will find that wine gambling and zina any of those are both uh, very attractive for those who desire them and they can also lead to addiction which means it becomes very difficult to retract so it's a slippery slope so Allah SWT tell them do not get near don't come near that tree he's not saying do not eat from that tree so they can come as close as sitting under the tree and they don't eat from it and why because it's very attractive and the attraction is very powerful and the human control over such desires is very poor it is very poor that's why Allah did not only prohibit the act of zina but even the look and the lust and the unnecessary communication with the other sex and exploring and kind of like examining the other's gender when a man looks at a woman even with her full hijab and niqab and cover and everything still man will lust after her because she's a woman so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is telling us something very central that even if you desire something by imagination it is different than when you see it or touch it that's why a shar قال the Arab poet says نظرة فابتسامة فموعد فلقاء ثم لمسة كأنها كهرباء كأنها كهرباء So the Arab poet is saying that zina starts off with a look look innocent look you see someone and then you get attracted to them so the first look is not enough so you look the other look and the other look then you start examining and investigating the physical person and then mawadun wa liqa can i talk to you may i ask you for something and then things roll and fall in their place okay so it's obvious a slippery slope and that's why we have not we have to avoid getting near this okay so here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them wala taqraba hadhihi ash-shajara so here is the apparent reason that we must understand that Al-Jannah has qualities. Things in paradise are quality stuff. And it is not appropriate for the Zalimeen to become dwellers of a good place like paradise. فَتَكُونَ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ Which means if you fall to that level, then paradise is not yours. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about man, إِنَّهُ كَانَ ظَلُومًا جَهُولَ That man is a wrongdoer by capacity, not by coercion, by capacity. Man has the capacity to do things wrong, and he has the capacity to do them right. Right? But Allah describes him, if left to his own device, he is a wrongdoer, ظَلُومًا he is jahula innahu kana zaluman jahula he acts based on arrogance and ignorance and he acts based on haste, haste and desire so when allah says do not come near that tree he did not put in the middle 
else you will eat from it and then you will be among he did not make those steps but those steps were the obvious thing because he told them eat from everywhere else but that tree do not get near that one that one you will not be able to resist of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that Satan is standing on the way and he is waiting to see and, and we will talk about this because it's mentioned in the in Surah Al-A'raf in the same story uh, how does Iblis use the tree to tempt Adam it's not mentioned here but it's mentioned in the story, same story in Surah Al-A'raf and you, you will see in Surah Al-A'raf that Iblis tells Adam and his wife both ما نهاكما ربكما عن هذه الشجرة إلا أن تكون ملكين أو تكون من الخالدين Allah did not stop you from eating from that tree except that you may turn into an angel or you would be here for eternity so Iblis used Adam's attraction to the tree, the temptation, by tempting him for more. The tree that Allah told you not to eat, not to get close to, is the tree of eternity. قَالَ يَا آدَمْ هَلْ أَدُلُّكَ عَلَى شَجَرَةِ الْخُلْدِ وَمُلْكٍ لَا يَبْلَى Should I tell you, Adam, about the tree of eternity and a kingdom that never perishes it never gets boring paradise what else from here we know that Iblis apparently knows about us things that we don't know about him and this is mentioned again in Surah Al-A'raf إِنَّهُ يَرَاكُمْ هُوَ وَقَبِيلُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا تَرَوْنَهُمْ Iblis sees of you what you do not see of him. Because if you translate the ayah word for word, you will say, he sees you by ways you do not see him, or from ways you don't see him. But the physical seeing is not the issue. The physical seeing is not the issue. But if you say, how did Iblis discover that Adam is already sold on that tree? He only wants to give him the final push. He wants to make it beautiful in his eyes more than it already is. How did he know? The ayah from uh, Surah Al-A'raf explains, إِنَّهُ يَرَاكُمْ هُوَ وَقَبِيلُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا تَرَوْنَهُمْ He sees you, or he sees of you, what you do not see of him. What is the difference between seeing you and seeing of you? When he sees you, he sees the physical body of Bani Adam, right? But when, he, when we say that he sees of you, we capture what the ayah is really pointing to. So this is translation with interpretation, meaning what does Iblis see beyond the physical Adam? Oh, he sees Adam looking extensively at the tree or rolling around the tree or how excited his eyes opened, his jaw are dropped, right? Now, Iblis knows that those are signs of a child of Adam when he is attracted to something. Yes. We will get to know this in the following ayah, but let me answer the question though. It is not clear from the text of the ayat where Iblis was when Allah told Adam to dwell in that place. 
okay? But it is something that we can figure out because Allah spoke to the angels in the beginning, told them that I'm creating a Khalifa in the land, in the earth, right? We don't see Iblis reacting to that, right? But when he told the angels to prostrate, he told Adam to prostrate, and we explained that last week extensively. Okay? So, Iblis is hearing what Allah is telling the angels regarding as sujood Adam, to prostrate for Adam, right? So, when Allah told the angels and Iblis to prostrate to Adam, Everybody prostrated from the angels, but Iblis refused. We explained that last time. So there is no barrier to prevent from the story, to prevent Iblis from hearing Allah telling Adam to dwell in that garden in paradise and to not get near that tree. Because Iblis himself uses that explanation to Adam when he wanted to tempt him. He says, your Lord did not stop you from getting near that tree or eating from that tree, except, so he added only the reason, but he definitely knew that Allah prohibited Adam from getting near that tree, okay? So how would, how would he know this, except if he had heard Allah telling Adam, what the restriction is in paradise. Okay? Zakallah khair. So, in paradise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكُلَا مِنْهَا رَغَدًا حَيْثُ شِئْتُمَا Ragad means abundance. Something that is kind of like unlimited or very close to be unlimited. It never finishes, it never ends. Ragadan. It's always mature and ready for consumption. Ragadan. Huh? All you can eat. All you can eat. Yes. Open buffet. <laughs> so, Ragadan Haythu Shi'ituma, which means the whole paradise is full of Ragad. Fruits, Ragad, lots of it. You cannot. You cannot consume it. You cannot finish it. And even if the whole humanity gets to paradise and eats from it, it's never finished. Ragadan, in terms of Allah describing it as ragad, it means the absolute type of ragad. Okay? This ragad is there wherever you want. Which means wherever you walk in paradise, you have all what you want and you get all what you want and it's always in abundance so that you don't have to fill your stomach unless you want to. You don't have to worry about it finishing is the point. Okay, you don't have to worry about it. Ragadan. When Allah told the Bani Israel, again we'll get to this part later on in Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, اسكنوا هذه القرية وكلوا منها حيث شئتم رغدا. Live, enter this village and dwell in it and wherever you want you will find abundance of everything. حيث شئتم رغدا. Here it is رغدا حيث شئتم. So رغد here is part of the description of Jannah. But Ragad, in terms of the village Allah instructed the children of Israel to live in, is limited to wherever they go and whatever they want. You see the difference now? Okay. وَلَا تَقْرَبَ هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةِ So, we were talking about how Iblis knows, how Iblis get to know, thank you, how Iblis get to know us in ways we do not know him. And 
the example I want to uh, give you, which I always use, and I love to use this example because it's, it's visible and practical. If you watch, if you have ever seen a silent movie, has any one of you saw a silent movie? Okay, so in silent movies, you see actors going, coming, and they are talking, you don't hear what they are saying, but you could figure what they are doing and what they are saying and what they will do and what their intention is and what their motive is by just watching. It is like us when we see somebody in a video where the voice is missing, like a thief is stealing something, right? When you see the person, you make your own expectation, right? This is Allah enabling us to recognize physically in our own human world, how would Iblis figure my intention by just watching me? So Allah gave him the power that we have some of. It's like when you get into your child's room and the child is not in the room, but you look for what they were doing. You look to the room and what is in the room and say, he must have been doing this, right? You could figure out. So Iblis also, he sees us, he doesn't enter into our heart, but he could figure what is in our heart, what is in our intention by looking at what we are doing. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ warns us from the root of our action. What is the root of our action? The root of our action is the intention. So he tells us, if anyone gets the beginning steps of thinking about doing something in his heart, right? And then if it was good, and he didn't do it because some circumstances came in, in his way, he will get hasana. And if he does it, he will get 10 hasana. And if it were evil and he doesn't do it, Allah will write it hasana. If it were evil and he does it, it will be written, I'm sorry, it will be written as hasana, yes. And if it was evil and he did it, it will be only once a year. So one of the benefits of this hadith is to understand that I have to exercise control at the intention stage. I have to stop myself once an idea comes to my head before it forms as a, as a plan or as intention, I need to think about, is it good? Then I let, I let my development go on in place. But if it is not, I need to stop it from the beginning, okay? It is like also the prohibition of zina from the source, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you must lower your gaze. Put your eyes down, don't extend a, a look beyond the inadvertent initial look. Don't go beyond that. You extend your look somewhere in the corner, and you find a sister or a lady, just turn your eyes away. Don't think after the first look. The first inadvertent look, الأولى, is, is forgiven. But the second, what comes next, is not. Of course you wonder, and I understand, but this is Allah teaching us. This is the Prophet Sallallahu teaching us. And they are telling us where to start our own protection. So, La Taqraba tells Adam, if you notice that tree from a distance, don't take a step closer to it. You see now the prohibition and how valuable it is. Why? Because the closer he gets to the tree, the more he sees of it, and the deeper it 
occupies his heart and the more he develops a desire to examine that tree to see what is different about that tree. So here comes Iblis to tell him what's different. Man, if you eat from this, you will be like an angel or you will be here for eternity and Allah created you from, for another place, right? But the temptation was already there. The seed of temptation was already there. All what Iblis does and this situation is a practical lesson for all the children of Adam. This is how things devolve into addiction or slippery slope that you don't want to get in. So it is that when you, he told him, لا تقرب هذه الشجرة, which means Allah pointed to the tree for them. Here comes Iblis and this is his role, is to beautify what is spiritually ugly while it could be materially beautiful. He focuses on the beauty of it. And who could deny that a beautiful man is beautiful? Or a beautiful woman is beautiful? Or a beautiful car is beautiful? Or $10 million are good to have? Who could deny this? None. So Allah, in this practical lesson, using Adam, our original ancestor السلام, to show us his experience with the shaitan and with the temptation and what the temptation led him to. Okay? So, فَتَكُونَ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ So here in Surah Al-Baqarah, it says, فَأَزَلَّهُمَ الشَّيْطَانُ عَنْهَا The shaitan did what? Azalla is not here humiliated. The other one, Azalla. But he made them slip. Zahla'ahum bil Arabi. So they slipped. They slipped means they decided to eat from that tree. They are sold. So they had the initial temptation because Allah made it prohibited for them and because they are created. Some people would ask, but why didn't Allah protect them from the shaitan? Well, Allah warned them. He told them, إن هذا عدو لك ولزوجك فلا يخرجنكما من الجنة فتشقى Iblis is an enemy for you and for your wife. Let him not get you out of paradise, lest you would suffer, O Adam. No, no, no. Okay. Here, Allah says the same thing, but in a different way, we'll come to it. Okay. It's in the same area we are in, 36. فَأَزَلَّهُمَ الشَّيْطَانُ عَنْهَا فَأَخْرَجَهُمَا مِمَّا كَانَ فِيهِ He got them out of paradise, of the abundance and the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the, the eternal life. So the question I was asking before the, the brother asked this question is that somebody may ask, why didn't Allah protect them? And the answer is, Allah showed them that this is their enemy. This is their enemy. Inna hadha, as he pointed to the tree, فَلَا وَلَا تَقْرَبَ هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةِ Do not get near this tree. He told him, this is your enemy. So let him not get you out of paradise, lest you would suffer. فَتَشْقَى You will be in trouble. And so, فَأَزَلَّهُمَ الشَّيْطَانِ The the ayat in the story in Surah Al-A'raf gives us some details about how the shaitan tempted Adam and his wife. Okay? After he refused the sujood, now I'm shifting.
to the story in Surah Al-A'raf. قَالَ مَا مَنَعَكَ أَلَّا تَسْجُدَ إِذْ أَمَرْتُكَ Oh Iblis, what prohibited you, what stopped you from making sujood when I commanded you? Here is Allah telling us it was not only the angels who were ordered. He is telling us Iblis by name was ordered to prostrate to Adam. You go to the ayah, ayah number 12 in Surah Al-A'raf, you will see this. What prohibited you, what stopped you from sujood when I commanded you? Qala ana khayrun min. He said, I am better than he is. Right? You created me from fire and you created him from mud. Qala fahbit minha fama yakunu laka an tatakabbara fiha. Fakhruj innaka min as So Iblis here is highlighted as the one who was kicked because of his arrogance. It is not befitting for you to act arrogantly in this place. So he was kicked out of paradise. فَخْرُجْ إِنَّكَ مِنَ الصَّاغِرِينَ You are among the humiliated ones. قَالَ أَنْذِرْنِي إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ قَالَ إِنَّكَ مِنَ الْمُنْذَرِينَ Give me a respite, give me a chance. Uh, and then he asks for a chance until the day of resurrection. Allah did not give him what he asked. قَالَ إِنَّكَ مِنَ الْمُنْذَرِينَ Here in Surah Al-A'raf. But in another place he told him, إِنَّكَ مِنَ الْمُنْذَرِينَ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْوَقْتِ الْمَعْلُومِ you also have a term, you also will die, you also will be resurrected. But he wanted not to go through all of this. Huh? He wanted to be given a chance until the day humans are resurrected. So he doesn't want to die. But Allah did not give him what he's asking for. قَالَ فَبِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي لَأَقْوَدَنَّ لَهُمْ سِرَاطَكَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ uh, of course, Iblis, when he makes a claim or reasoning, it's a false claim and false reasoning. We have to be careful now. Even when he's talking to Allah, when he talked to Adam, it's a false connection, right? He established false reasoning, okay? So he says, فَبِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي Accusing Allah of tempting him, or deceiving him, brother, okay? فَبِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي Because you made me slip into sin, I will stop for them on every corner of the straight path. He is not going to stop on the path to nightclubs. Because if you're going to a nightclub, the way is open. You don't need more shaitan than your desire. Right? But if you're going to the masjid, he will find 10, 20, 100 reasons to give you to not come here. So, ثُمَّ لَآتِيَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ Which means from the front. وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ And from behind. وَعَنْ أَيْمَانِهِمْ وَعَنْ شَمَائِلِهِمْ ثُمَّ لَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرَهُمْ وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرَهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ You will not find many of them grateful. You will not find many of them grateful. So this scene, this image, this picture that the shaitan is talking to Allah, telling him, I will come to them from ahead of them. And this is his favorite place, right? And then وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ From behind them, pushing. When he comes from the front, it's attraction. It's attraction. When he comes from the back, it's pushing. When he comes from right or left, it is instigation. He instigates you. He arouses you. Okay? So you see, the shaitan wants to see us 360 degrees. So if you read further in Surah Al-A'raf, you will find the image described by Allah as tawaf shaytan He says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ Those who live mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their life, 
and their choices. Inna al-ladhina taqaw idha masahum when they are touched. Ta'ifun min al-shaytan. Someone, some devil circling around them. What is he doing? He wants to get 360 degree image and picture. It's like a scanner. He wants to see, are you hesitant? Are you aggressively going after what is right or what's wrong? He wants to see you from all angels, all angles. So we have to be careful. We have to be mindful that when we have a sense, and this is only given to the muttaqeen, and this is what the ayah is saying. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا إِذَا مَسَّهُمْ طَائِفٌ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ تَذَكَّرُوا Once the shaitan starts to talk to you, you remember, this is the same devil who tempted Adam. I want to turn him off. I don't want to even listen to what he has to say. So the image is telling and instructing for us as well as to how to respond to the instigation of the shaitan. Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, أُخْرُجْ مِنْهَا مَذْؤُومًا مَدْحُورًا Get out of here, cursed and doomed. لَمَنْ تَبِعَكَ مِنْهُمْ لَأَمْلَأَنَّ جَهَنَّمَ مِنْكُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ Anyone who follows you, I will fill Jahannam with all of you. وَيَا آدَمُ اسْكُنْ أَنْتَ وَزَوْجُكَ الْجَنَّةِ فَكُلَا مِنْ حَيْثُ شِئْتُمَا وَلَا تَقْرَبَا هذه الشجرة فتكون من الظالمين. Almost word for word the instructions given to Adam. So here is the answer to your question again. You asked, how did Iblis know? This section, this ayah comes in the middle of or at the end of the discussion between Allah and Iblis. As Allah is kicking Iblis out, Iblis is vowing to tempt us and persuade us to do his bidding, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, anyone who follows you, I will fill Jahannam with you all together. And now he tells Adam, Uskun anta wa zawjuk al jannah, fakula minha haythu shi'tuma, fakula min haythu shi'tuma, in Surah Al-Baqarah, فَكُلَا مِنْهَا حَيْثُ شِئْتُمَا هنا in Al-A'raf, فَكُلَا مِنْ فَكُلَا مِنْ حَيْثُ شِئْتُمَا وَلَا تَقْرَبَا هَذِهِ الشَّجْرَةِ فَتَكُونَ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ And then comes the whispering of the shaytan, فَوَسْوَسَ لَهُمَا الشَّيْطَانِ لِيُبْدِيَ لَهُمَا مَا وُورِيَ عَنْهُمَا مِنْ سَوْآتِهِمَا The shaytan comes in to whisper to them and then it will tell us what he says. لِيُبْدِيَ لَهُمَا مَا وُورِيَ عَنْهُمَا مِنْ سَوْآتِهِمَا 99 of the tafsir you read, يُبْدِيَ لَهُمَا مَا وُورِيَ عَنْهُمَا مِنْ سَوْآتِهِمَا is referring to their genitalia. That this is awra. But sawa is a word that is major expansive than awra. Awra is one kind of sawa. But there are moral sawat. Sawat that we want to cover. We want to cover our intentions. We want to cover our plans. We don't want to people to see us in our worst of conditions or situations. Right? But the shaitan sees us in all of our conditions. And he figures out our condition. He's afraid. He is lusting after her. Uh, she is responding positively. So he works with everybody. And his way is either direct uh, talking, which is called wiswas, whispering in your ear or in your heart, or to throw in your heart of his desire for you to continue to lust after what you want. So how does he know what I love? It is 
when he watches me, he knows what kind of food I like, when do I like to sleep, when do I like to wake up, when do I like, whom do I like among people, whom do I do not like among people. So he uses all of this information to know where is my weakness. This is why it comes the issue of tawaf, that he runs around me to see where am I most vulnerable? Where, what are my reasons for wanting something or not wanting something? So he uses what I love as much as he uses what I fear, what I worry about, what I hate. So the shaitan uses all of these weapons and information as his ways into how to tempt me. So we have to be careful. As if the Quran is telling us, don't even let the shaitan know what is wrong about you. Don't hide from people, hide also from the shaitan. Don't show except your great colors, your great character. Always be among people who would guide you and help you and persuade you to do the right thing because they become your protection. So I think I went further, but I wanted to get this part from Surah Al-A'raf here. So when, when he started, in ayah 36, Surah Al-Baqarah, but we are borrowing from Surah Al-A'raf. في الأعراف ولا في البقرة؟ في الأعراف آية 20 آية 20 Yes <تصفيق> ما ربكما عن هذه الشجرة So when, when Iblis is tempting Adam and Eve he is talking to them in front of the tree as Allah brought Adam to the tree and told him and his wife, وَلَا تَقْرَبَ هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةِ He pointed it to them. Iblis got them to the tree against what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or they got to the tree because of their desire to discover that tree. And Iblis knew when they came to the tree that they are already lusting. All what he does is give them the push, tell them, what reason should they use as an excuse to eat from that tree? So what the reasons are, he says, مَا نَهَاكُمَا رَبُّكُمَا عَنْ هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةِ إِلَّا أَنْ تَكُونَ مَلَكَيْنِ أَوْ تَكُونَ مِنَ الْخَالِدِينَ Allah only prohibited you from eating from that tree, lest you turn into angels, or else to be amongst those who will live for eternity talking about I've heard some tafsir that say that when he said to convince them that you'll be like the angels yes he will turn into angels yeah so and they, this is as deceptive as it can be because angels are created from light no. humans are created from mud it's a totally different material yeah. angels do not disobey Allah they have no capacity even to disobey Allah Okay, لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون. So he is telling Adam and Eve, if you eat from that tree, you will be one of those angels. Okay, and this is deceptive. What made them fall for his deception? It is their desire. What did he use? It is their desire to eat from that tree to see what would happen. But Allah had told them from the beginning, and this is why this example is helpful. It should be for us humans, as children of Adam, that when Allah tells us, do not do something, you don't have to examine all the possible reasons, analyze them, and come up with your own conclusion. Because in that process of analyzing, the shaitan comes in.
and this is why some of the people who are explaining this said this is where the bid'ah starts. People do bid'ah thinking they're doing more good to please Allah. Well, الشيطان سول لهم وأملا لهم الشيطان is here to stay with us until we die even as we are dying he will be tempting us so this is clear in the Quran and uh, the point that I'm trying to get here is فلما ذاق الشجرة بدت لهما سوآتهما السوء هي كل ما يسوء بني آدم السوء كل ما يسوء بني آدم I don't like anybody to see me uh, while I'm in bed I don't like so this is nature this is us being created as a creature that has something called shyness, haya. It is part of the fitra. Al haya min al fitra. So the shaitan comes to take that barrier from us, the barrier of the sense of shyness, the sense of respecting each other, the sense of caring and protecting each other's privacy. Okay? So these are all sawat. So a sawa is not only the physical aura. This is what I'm trying to say. A sawa is not only the physical aura because in this case, what is worse for, for their physical aura to be exposed after it was covered or for the exposure of their desire to violate the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sure. Which is worse? Yes. Huh? I didn't hear you. See, I have a question. Oh, yes. Well, no. No. So he's saying why in Surah Taha Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Adam and Eve فَلَا يُخْرِجَنَّكُمَا Don't let him get both of you out of paradise. But then when it came to the consequences he told Adam alone فَتَشْقَى Lest you Adam would suffer. Yeah. It is because Allah, based on his divine knowledge and wisdom, who created us into males and females, right? It is his divine plan that the females will become pregnant. And because they become pregnant, and also their monthly cycles and everything else, they need someone to provide for them so that they don't have to work and earn their own living and be pushing men on the side or to be exposed to pressure or temptation. So Allah, in recognition of this, He assigned the male to be the one who is responsible to provide for the family. So the shaqa to earn the living, the suffering to earn living for himself and his dependent and his wife and his children is on the man. And societies that push the women to earn their own living, they ended up destroying the family. And when they did, the rate of birth is way down below the rate of death and as such, they cannot keep the population percentage necessary for sustaining their societies and their civilization. So the shaqa is on the man in this life. It is reference to the effort he will have to put outside the home to struggle with everything else. And the women will only have to struggle with her husband and her children and other things to maintain the family life. 
I think I took one minute beyond my time. We'll stop here. This is ayah number uh, 36. We did not finish it yet. Thirty-six al-Baqarah. Inshallah. Subhanakallahu wa hamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayka.